Now that we've been introduced to the different standard manipulator types, we can practice drawing complete kinematic diagrams for all of these different three degree of freedom manipulators. When we draw kinematic diagrams, there are four things that we need to make sure and include in our diagram. First, we need to make sure that we include all of the links and joints in the manipulator. Secondly, we need to make sure that we include all of the necessary coordinate frames. We need to have at least one coordinate frame per joint and one coordinate frame on the end effector. When we draw these coordinate frames, we make sure to follow two rules. First, the right hand rule, and secondly, we always make the z-axis be either the axis of rotation for a revolute joint or the direction of motion for a prismatic joint. The third thing our kinematic diagram needs to include is the joint variables. Here we need to make sure that we follow the right hand rule so that the positive direction of our joint variables agrees with the coordinate frames that we drew. And we also need to make sure that our joint variables agree with our physical manipulator. In other words, whichever direction we draw the positive direction of, of the joint variable, it has to be that that is the positive direction in our actual manipulator. Lastly, we need to make sure that we label the link lengths in our kinematic diagram. We need to do this because the link lengths will be variables that will show up when we do our forward kinematics. Now, let's go ahead and draw the kinematic diagrams for the standard manipulator types. We'll start with the Cartesian manipulator. Remember that the Cartesian manipulator consists of three prismatic joints. So I'll start by drawing the three prismatic joints. I'll start out with a joint that is moving to the right. This joint will be connected to another joint in the Cartesian manipulator, the three joints have to be perpendicular to each other. So I can make this second joint either be moving into or out of the page, or it can be moving up and down. I'm going to make it move into the page. So I'll draw the square as if it is moving into the page. Then there will be a link coming off of that square and we need one last prismatic joint here, so I'll draw another cube. Now this one, I'm gonna redraw my link here so it looks a little bit more realistic. There we go. This one will have to be moving either up or down. I'll draw it as if it's moving down and here we have the Cartesian manipulator. So I've drawn the three joints connected by links. The next thing I have to do is draw the coordinate frames. I need to follow two rules when I do this. The first is the right hand rule and the other one is that the Z axis has to be either the axis of rotation or the direction of motion for a prismatic joint. Since I have three prismatic joints, I'm going to make Z be the direction of motion. I'm going to start by drawing my Z axes. So here's Z0. Z1 is moving into the page. Z2 is moving down. Now I also need a coordinate frame on my end effector. The end effector coordinate frame will just be the same as the coordinate frame that came before. So here Z3 will be down. Now I have to fill in the X and Y axes and all I have to do here 
is make sure and follow the right hand rule. So if Z0 is going to the right, I'm going to draw X going into the page. And then that will leave the Y axis going up so as to follow the right hand rule. One way to apply the right hand rule is to put your thumb in the Z direction, then put the rest of your fingers in the X direction and the palm of your hand is pointing in the direction of Y. So here, if I put my thumb to the right and I put my fingers pointing into the page, that leaves the palm of my hand pointing up, and that's how I know that Y has to be up. For this next one, I'm going to make X be moving to the right. So now I have to draw Y so that it follows the right hand rule. If I put my thumb pointing into the page and my fingers pointing to the right, that leaves my palm pointing down. So Y1 would have to be pointing down. For the two frame, I'm going to make X be pointing to the right. So if I point my thumb down and I put, point my fingers to the right, that leaves the palm of my hand pointing towards me or out of the page. So I'm going to draw Y in that direction. Now the frame of the end effector will just duplicate the two frame. So now my kinematic diagram has the links and the joints and it has the coordinate frames. I still need to label my link lengths and I just start labeling those link lengths. I use the letter A and I'll number them starting at either 0 or 1. You can do it either way. And we just have to make sure that we put a variable on every link length. Now I still haven't done one thing on this kinematic diagram. I need to label the joint variables. For prismatic joints, the joint variable will just be pointing in the same direction as the z-axis, the direction that the joint is going. And I usually use the letter D for this. And this first one, I'm going to call that variable D1 because that variable affects the one axis. Here's D2 and then D3 will be pointing down. And this is our complete kinematic diagram for the Cartesian manipulator. Next, let's do the kinematic diagram for the Scara manipulator. A Scara manipulator starts off with a revolute joint like that, and then there's another revolute joint connected to it and finally there's a prismatic joint which moves down. So now I'm going to draw the coordinate frames on this. I need to have four frames here because I need one for each joint and one for the end effector. I'll start by following the rule that says that the z-axis has to be either the axis of rotation for a revolute joint or the direction of motion for a prismatic joint. So z0 has to be either up or down because that's the axis of rotation. Z1 also has to be either up or down because that's the axis of rotation and Z2 also has to be up or down because that's the direction of motion of the prismatic joint. My end effector coordinate frame just copies the frame before it, so Z3 will also be down. Now I have to fill in X and Y, and I have to do this in such a way 
that the coordinate frame follows the right hand rule. So for this first one, I can pick x to be any direction I want. I'm going to pick x to be to the right. And then I'll use the right hand rule to figure out where y is. So if I point my thumb up in the z direction and I point my fingers to the right, that leaves the palm of my hand pointing into the page. So here's a axis pointing into the page. And to make things easy on myself, I'm going to use the same approach on this next joint. So I'll make x be pointing to the right, which will leave y be pointing into the page. Now for coordinate frame 2, I'm also going to make x be pointing to the right. So now if I follow the right hand rule, I'll point my thumb down and I'll point my fingers to the right and that leaves the palm of my hand pointing out of the page. So here's an axis pointing out of the page. Lastly, I'll copy this frame on the end effector. Next, I'll draw in my joint variables. I have to make sure to follow the right hand rule here. To find the positive direction of the joint variable for the zero frame, I point my thumb up and I see that my fingers curl around behind my thumb. So I'm going to draw my direction of the joint variable following the back of this cylinder and I label that theta 1. I call it theta 1 because it affects the 1 coordinate frame. I'll do the same thing for this next joint. When I point my thumb up, my fingers curl around behind my thumb. So I'll follow the back of this cylinder to show that this is theta 2. Lastly, the displacement variable for this prismatic joint is going down. We'll call that D3. The last thing I need to do is label my link lengths. And I'll just start out at 1 and label each link length as a different variable. And here we are finished with the kinematic diagram for the Scara manipulator. As one last example, let's draw the kinematic diagram for the spherical manipulator. A spherical manipulator starts out with a revolute joint like this, and then there's another revolute joint on top of it but the axis of rotation is at a right angle from the first one. And then the last joint of the spherical manipulator is a prismatic joint that's moving out like that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is draw the coordinate frames and we're going to start out by drawing the z-axis. For a revolute joint, the z-axis is the axis of rotation. So for the zero frame, it's up and for the one frame, it's either coming into or out of the page. I'm going to draw it coming out of the page. And then the z-axis for this prismatic joint is the direction of motion and the coordinate frame on the end effector is the same as the last frame. Now I'll fill in x and y. 
x is a free choice, so in this case I'm going to draw it to the right. Then to get y, I have to follow the right hand rule. So if I put my thumb pointing up and my fingers pointing to the right to match x, the palm of my hand is pointing into the page. So I'll draw the y axis going into the page. Now for this next frame, I'm going to make x be going to the right. Then I have to follow the right hand rule. So I point my thumb coming out of the page. I point my fingers going to the right. And that leaves the palm of my hand pointing up. So that defines the y axis as pointing up. Now for the two frame. X, once again, is a free choice, so I'm going to make X be going into the page. And then I have to follow the right hand rule. So I point my thumb to the right, because that's the Z direction. I point my fingers going into the page, and my palm is then pointing up. So that means that the Y axis, Y2, will be going up. For the three frame, I just copy the two frame. So that means that x3 will be pointing into the page and y3 will be pointing up. Now let's draw the joint variables. For the zero frame, I point my thumb in the direction of z and I see what direction my fingers curl. My fingers curl to the left behind Z, so I'll draw my joint variable following the back of the cylinder. And I call that theta 1 because theta 1 affects the 1 frame. Now I'll do the same thing with the next joint. I point my thumb in the Z direction, which is coming out of the page towards me, and I see that my fingers curl to the left up around the top of my thumb. In other words, I see my fingers curling in the counterclockwise direction. So I show this joint variable going up around in the counterclockwise direction and I call that theta 2 because theta 2 affects the 2 frame. Lastly, I can draw the displacement of the prismatic joint, which is positive going to the right, and I call that D3 because that affects the 3 frame. Now I'm not quite done yet because I haven't labeled the link lengths yet. So I'll write A1 on the first link, and I'm just starting at 1 and counting up. So A2 on the second link and A3 on the third link. And then I'm done drawing the kinematic diagram for the spherical manipulator.